Hey, welcome back, comic fans. It's Mr. Q Comics, back with another haul video. I've got another old one here. Outdated haul, stuff I haven't gone through. So um, before I get into it, if you're new to the channel, please go down below, hit the subscribe button for me, hit the like if you like it, and leave some comments. Let me know what you think of these books. So today, what I've got is, for any of you who have watched uh, previous videos, you know that I have gotten a lot of cool books through grab bags at one of my local shops. So... I have a bunch of grab bag books today. Again, these are really old. These are like pre-pandemic shutdown stuff I just never put away. And I've kind of selectively picked out a few of the books I want to show off. I really bought a ton of these grab bags from these guys. Um, most of the time, they're pretty much full of uh, a lot of Marvel stuff. You get some modern stuff in there, but I've been able to put together some really nice Bronze Age Marvel runs out of these grab bags. Uh, a little bit of DC mostly Marvel just because the collections they buy it's mostly Marvel so with that let's jump into it one of the few DC books I have today all-star comics number 59 from 1976 this is I believe the second appearance of Power Girl it's an Ernie Chan cover Jerry Conway story and it's probably mid-grade so as I mentioned before these grab bags they don't even do them anymore um, obviously the pandemic they shut down for a long time, and, and they've kind of changed things up. I think they've gone to uh, more mystery boxes, um, like $20 boxes, which are cool. I haven't checked them out. Uh, no, I did. I bought a couple. I've just been trying to steer away from the mystery bag and mystery box because it is a good way to really, <laughs> really bloat your collection if you're trying to keep it somewhat manageable. And right now, mine is not manageable. So I've kind of tried to stay away from them for a little bit anyway. So, all right. That's the one of the few DCs I got. I also got Champions number seven from 1976. This is the first appearance of Yuri Petrovich, the fourth Crimson Dynamo, Rich Buckler cover, George Tuska art, and Tony Isabella story. And it had number eight as well. I think I had a good run in this. I can't remember if it was these grab bags where I picked up a good uh, solid run of the Champions, so cool bronze age stuff this is just uh next we got some marvel movie adaptation stuff dragon slayer number one and number two again if you've watched my videos before i grew up in the 80s so i absolutely love picking up any of these marvel movie adaptations anything from the 1980s oh here we go another dc book <laughs> captain adam number one from 1987 this one's in pretty good shape i think this is probably near mid-range it's the first uh i think it's the first time captain adam appears in dc here and his origin someone correct me if i'm wrong i think it was a charlton property in the silver age i think i'm probably screwing that up i really can't recall but uh, i think it was something like that so again these things are like 10 bucks and you got like seven books so most of these things are like a buck to a buck fifty all right, now we got some incredible Hulk stuff. I picked out some of the better Hulk books. I have pieced together a huge run, probably like 60, 70 issues of Hulk straight uh, through these grab bags. A lot of duplicates, but these are kind of some of the better, higher grade ones. Issue 172, uh, really good shape, probably very fine range. This is from 1974, and I think it's a retelling of the uh, Juggernaut's origin. Herb Trimpey on this cover. I think all of these I'm gonna show are Herb Trimpey covers, actually. We got 173, another gorgeous color, really nice shape. Most of these are all at least VF. This one's probably a little bit better. I think this is like a 9.0, gorgeous yellows on that. 174. We got 177, which is one of the few keys here, Hulk versus Warlock. Again, really good shape, very fine range. I think I have this a couple times over, but this is a really nice copy. I mean, I'm super stoked to be pulling these Bronze Age books, 20 cent Marvel books out of there for a buck fifty in VF condition. That's that's pretty awesome stuff. We got 197, which is an awesome Bernie Wrightson cover, Man Thing vs. Hulk. Super, super awesome cover here. Love this one. Um, and issue number 200, I think, of the last one I picked for the Hulk, the anniversary issue. This one, uh, Rich Buckler on the cover, Rich Buckler and John Romita. So. Yeah, cool stuff with those. Set those aside. 
Another nice little Bronze Age run. This is one I'd had. This is uh, pretty hot right now. Um, again, I picked these up a while ago, but uh, news just came out about casting for this character for Disney+. Plus. We've got another copy of Moon Knight number one. So this is, I think this is the first ongoing series for Moon Knight. Uh, his origin, and I, I think it's first Bushman in here as well. This So this is a Bill Sinkowitz cover. It's from 1980, and this was like, pretty much a straight run of Moon Knight in uh, in really good shape here. Issue number two. Issue number three. Yeah, all of these probably VF to VF near mint. Four. Get those out of the way. Issue number five. So again, like a buck fifty for all of these. Six. All right, takes a break at six. And we get number 10. And finally, number 12, which was actually this was beat up and I picked it up somewhere else. Uh, this is from a different shop. Uh, this is probably around, around fine, very fine range. This is the first appearance of Morpheus, and it's a uh, Frank Miller cover on this one. So that was the one that the one Moon Knight book that didn't uh, come from the grab bags here. but. I think this had some speckers on like the key collector top 10 or something back then when I picked it up. I can't recall. <laughs> but nearly the full run, the, you know, from the early part in the Moon Knight series. So that is pretty cool stuff for uh, $10 grab bags. All right. This is another book I'm sure I have shown off many times. I probably have four or five of these. This is Thor number 229 from 1974. Again, really nice copy, probably in the very fine range. And uh, this is just one of those books that has the ad for Hulk 181 for all you Wolverine fans. So there's a Iron Fist issue, which I'm drawing a blank on, which issue number, and a Daredevil, I think. All three of them have these Hulk 181 ads. I think they're all released at the same time, I think. Uh, I think those are the only three books, so these don't go for a ton, but certainly cool to have these in your collection if you're a Wolverine fan. So I pick them up every time I find them, and I can usually find them for ten bucks or less. Again, that one came out of a grab bag for a buck fifty. So, all right, let's move on to a few books I picked up from another shop. We've got a little bit more DC. This got hot for a while, and then I think it cooled off. It's another book I've had and sold. Uh, Infinite Crisis number three, cool Jim Lee cover. Uh, this is from 2006. This is the first appearance of Jamie Reyes, who becomes the third Blue Beetle. Beetle excuse me. And I got issue number five, which is uh, the first uh, Jamie Reyes as the new Blue Beetle. Both uh, really good condition. I got them for two bucks a pop. So pretty cool. I think I did have the whole set years ago when I got back into collecting and sold it on eBay before it was really uh, anyone was paying attention to it. Next is just a J. Scott Campbell cover that I have been wanting. Um, Marvel Divas number one from 19, or sorry, 2009. This is in really good shape, very fine near mint, really cool cover. Um, and this was like three and a half bucks. So cool to have that add to my J. Scott Campbell cover collection. I do love J. Scott Campbell art, I just do not like paying. Some of the premiums, his uh, his covers, especially the incentive variants, they can go for crazy money. And I like his art. I do find a lot of it to be very, very similar. Just change the hair color, and Mary Jane goes from the goes goes uh, right to the black hat, you know. <laughs> so, not trying to knock it, but just for the money and how many J. Scott Campbell covers there are out there. He's on every major book, you know, five, six covers each. It just gets to be uh, a lot of them. So, I'll write another one from the grab bags that I will always pick up, Secret Wars number one. I just saw Reggie Klex doing a video talking about this as uh, an undervalued key, and I would certainly agree. Uh, I have been stockpiling full runs of Secret Wars for the past couple years. I probably have five or six full runs, uh, and I will be holding on to those because I feel like at some point, at some point, this has to be made into a movie or something. And you've got the first appearance, I think the first cameo of the Beyonder in here. Now, there's variants in here, okay? There is a misprint where Galactus shows up as blue and white, and every copy I've ever picked up of this book is that variant. I'll call it the variant, even though the actual coloring, the uh, whatever it is, purple and pink or whatever, magenta, that seems to be the more rare one because I have never found it, so 
just an FYI, I see people selling the Blue Galactus variant on uh, eBay as if it's, you know, more rare and people paying a premium. I don't think it is. I think the actual correct color is the rare one. Maybe it's a global, you know, like a geographical location thing. I'm not sure, but just an FYI on that. So that one there, another Blue Galactus. All right, we got a copy of ASM 136, again, from the grab bags. This is the first Harry Osborn as the new Green Goblin from 1974. Nice mid-grade book, probably fine range. John, John Romita Sr. on the cover. Jerry Conway story. So, again, $1.50. Cannot go wrong. Early ASM out of those grab bags. Awesome stuff. I think that was one of the big prizes. Another cool grab bag book. I think, yeah, the whole run, I'm just showing off this issue, Logan's run number six from 1977. I think I got issue one through seven in the grab bag. So really good shape, very fine range, first solo Thanos story, uh, Paul Gillisy on the cover. And I think it's Mike Zek on the interiors on this one. All right, getting down to the end. Another one from the grab bags, rough shape, but man thing. Number one, uh, this is from 1974, and this is this is really rough. Probably good, very good range, uh, but again, a buck fifty. You're not going to complain. Uh, it's the second appearance of Howard the Duck, and this is Frank Bruner on the cover. All right, I got a couple issues of these. This was one of the grand prizes, and then he had one sitting in the shop. So I think I like bought one one day I was in there, and then the next time I was in, I got it in the grab bag or something like that. So. It's a copy of Joker number one. Uh, got two of them. So one from the grab bag for a buck fifty. These are both probably fine, very fine range from 1975. And I think I paid like 30 bucks for the second one. I just, it was at the time everyone was still hot about the Joker. It's the first solo uh, Joker series, Dick Giordano cover, Irv Novick art, and Denny O'Neill on the story. So I got a couple of them. All right, how many more? Not too, too many more. This is a classic Joker cover, Detective Comics number 475 from 1978. Really rough shape. This is good. It's stained. It's beat up. It presents okay, <laughs> but it was only $7. That's why I grabbed it. This book is crazy expensive. Uh, I looked this up in high grade. It goes for big money. I was surprised. So for seven bucks, I was happy to pick up a super low grade, low grade copy just to uh, have in the collection. One of my all time favorite books from my childhood. So Wolverine number one, they had another sharp copy in a newsstand uh, from 1988. This is the first ongoing series. First Wolverine is Patch. You've got John Buscema on the cover and art in a Chris Claremont story. So. This was just one of those books that had been floating around and they had it. It was like 32 bucks and it's in near mint condition. I don't know if it's a 9.8. I do have a 9.8. I had two and sold one, um, but I, I was able to retain my childhood copy, actually graded out at a 9.8. But just love this, this cover. Uh, I loved this series as a kid. Uh, and I always remember this book. It just the copy I have for my childhood, I remember picking up from the back issue bins for a couple of bucks. Not being able to afford the Frank Miller number one, but being able to get this and was able to keep it in my short boxes for decades and, and still get a 9.8. So just a classic one, one of those books I'm a sucker for. And a new stand to boot. It looks pretty good. It looks like it might be possibly a 9.8. Maybe a 9.6. Who the hell knows? You never you never know what you're gonna get when you send these things in. So all right, last few books. So I got three bundled together this was a pretty cool deal i had some leftover childhood toys uh when i got back into collecting comics i just started purging my childhood toy collection stuff that i didn't want to retain um so i sold off a lot of transformers um i retained like half of my he-man select figures uh most of my gi joes i still have but uh i had a box full of if anyone remembers those muscle men those little pink rubber guys i didn't have any of the weird colors but i, I had all the pink ones about a hundred of them and i had all the stuff piled in my parents attic they've been bugging me about for years to get it out of there one day i finally did and and i didn't do anything with these muscle men and one day I finally brought it into my local shop that does sell toys they offered me some money for it we ended up working up a trade so i traded them a hundred pink muscle men, like 101, something like that. I think he was gonna give me like 100 bucks for it, which I thought was pretty awesome because it was gonna be a pain to sell them all on eBay. So I traded him, 
The Muscle Men, and 20 bucks for these three books. ASM 601, J. Scott Campbell. Again, these are some of the awesome, these are, you know, anything Spidey with J. Scott Campbell is what I'm going to go for because I'm a Spidey fan. And I love the, you know, regular covers from this ASM run. And these go for big money, and these are all in awesome shape. All three of them, probably near mint condition. Got 606. And of course, we got 607. So, you know, they all got to be at least 9.4s. I think one or two have a shot at a 9.6 or or a 9.8 with a press. I would thought that was a great deal. Uh, you know, I was happy to trade those away with 20 bucks to get these. I think I have them. I actually do have them signed by J. Scott Campbell. I purchased them on eBay with that uh, Black Panther number one. All signed by J. Scott Campbell a few years ago. Got a, a screaming deal on eBay. Someone had not listed all the books and when I messaged them, she let me know she happened to have the extra ones in there and I think I won the whole lot for like 30 bucks or something crazy which is that Black Panther book is huge now too so super happy to have them these are great great J. Scott Campbell covers I love these uh, 607 is phenomenal if you love pinup 100 uh, 100 muscle men and 20 bucks for those three in near mint condition so Definitely happy with that. I don't even know if I've ever seen him put those muscle men out in the store. So I don't know. I don't think I had anything super rare in there, but uh, definitely worth it for me and happy to let the toys go to someone who could do something with them. Okay, and final book, another hot book. Uh, it's been up and down, but one everyone's talking about. This came in the grab bags. Nova number one. This is probably a mid-grade copy, 1976. First appearance and origin of Richard Ryder as Nova. John Buscema cover and art and a Marv Wolfman story. So that was one of the other grand prizes with the grab bag. So happy to have a copy of that. So that is it for the haul, guys. Again, if you like, uh, if you like the video, please go down below, hit the like button, subscribe, let me know what you think, and I will see you guys soon.